Many horror games in the current gaming industry utilize large budgets, fancy tech, and high detail graphics in order to convey horror. However, this perspective often fails to capture the true soul of horror, instead leaving behind a husk of an experience composed of fancy images and gory details that are quickly forgotten with the newest engine and release. An exception to this pattern can be found in Signalia's, which sporting a team of only two devs and a budget far below most indie projects, were able to craft an experience that truly immersed the player. In today's video, I will explain how they were able to pull this off and why they should be used as an example, not just for other indie devs, but to the horror industry at large on how to make the most of the gaming medium. To begin, we should examine the perspective of the game. Signalis utilizes a top-down 2D experience akin to what was common in early horror. One would be quick to assume that this causes the game to feel outdated, that by making this choice despite the time and money it would save for the devs, would come at a detriment to the experience as a whole. However, Signalius does not fall to this trap, and utilizes a large variety of creative decisions to keep the player engaged despite its graphical shortcomings. One such decision can be found in the 3D sections of the game. Signalius, unlike many other 2D top-downs, offers short bursts of gameplay that adds an extra dimension to the experience. By keeping these segments short, they can keep production costs low and thus possible for their team. These sections can be seen in a variety of ways. Like here, this cockpit where we can view the world through our character's eyes and interact with every system before us. Or this elevator where we can see our descent deeper into the facility and understand the tension that follows this action. During puzzles, granting greater degrees of details and connection to the in-game obstacles that we must overcome or during cinematic scenes where we can gain the true immersion of important events by directly experiencing them. These 3D scenes complement and break up the monotony of the average gameplay, allowing for the player to feel more involved with the world around them, as well as offer points of tension that serve as helpful transitions between major parts of the game. Another decision that complements the immersion is the choice in music. The usage of the mysterious tones and captivating melodies of the grand classical pieces that underline gameplay can even make the simplest scenes feel absolutely terrifying. Be it the silence of the save rooms which has you questioning the true safety of this momentary break, the orchestral weight that connotates every cutscene with unique pieces that set the tone without a single word being said, or have you ever felt your heart beat match with the rhythm of music? Well Signalis uses this experience to its advantage. As when engaging the underworldly hell spawns that roam the halls, the music rises, quickening the heart in the moment and instilling fear. Even when out of combat, the single tones that define the background music ring out in empty hallways, seemingly echoing in an unnatural and wrong sensation, filling one with fear and dread. From music, we can transition to art style. Signalis' art style is marketably retro. Barring aspects from what made the old horror games which faced the same graphical limits, yet were still gems in their own right. It is this selective detail that the game is able to allow its art to shine. Opting out of making every space of the map in perfect detail, the game does provide focus on some things, and what it does provide focus on is certainly done in the name of furthering the horror aesthetic. This can be seen with the visceral, fleshy pulps, corpse, rot, and other signs of gore and decay that are clearly pulling the player into the hellscape that the game is portraying. The art also helps set a tone, using a color palette dominated by harsh and unfamiliar reds that clash with the seemingly normal atmospheres that we traverse through. These reds are supplemented by clever light design that shrouds the undetailed areas in darkness and in the process places greater focus on the player and the aforementioned details that do exist. It is also through this lighting that one is left feeling as if they are faced with the greatest fear of all, the fear of the unknown. This primal fear nabs at us even if there is nothing on screen for us to particularly focus that fear on. From here, we can move to weaponry. Hard games have a complicated relationship with weaponry, creating situations where players may feel as though enemies offer no real threat, or in other situations that it is simply impossible to traverse and progress in the game. However, Signalis is able to circumnavigate this issue by having guns that either do too low damage in cases with the pistol, but have readily available ammo, 
or in alternate situations, do lots of damage and have rare ammo, as in the case of the rifle. Regardless of which weapon, the game rewards slow and organized clearing of enemies, and just sprinting in with no plan whatsoever may quickly result in your demise. It should be added here that the rate at which we acquire new weaponry is the same that the game introduces new enemies to us, and all of these decisions and balancing allow you to remain in character as a lost person drifting these halls of the base, rather than feel as though you are just another part that is just helpless against everything against you, or in the alternative, that they are helpless against you. By doing this, it creates fun gameplay that captivates the player for the entire experience, really pulling you into the game. But now into those enemies that you fight with the aforementioned weapons. The enemies in Signalis offer varied attributes that make each encounter with them unique. Be it auras that climb out of the floors and walls to give you a jump scare when you believed you had some safety in a cleared room, Colibris which distort your screen with screaming radio frequencies and require you to match them to be passed. The thick armor and laser cannons of Myinas, or even the long range attacks of the Storches. The enemies in Signalis will certainly keep you alert and force you to plan more and be more careful in general as you descend deeper into this hellscape. All of these enemies are no joke, being able to quickly bring you down or deal lasting damage that will force you to find valuable heals to recruit from them. And regardless of which enemy and how many you find in a room, you will always find yourself engrossed in planning out the scene before you, choosing how to fight these enemies or if you're going to wait to fight them till later, immersing you in the gameplay and thus in the process pushing you deeper into the game's atmosphere. By pushing deeper into Sinalis' atmosphere, we can find the one gem that lies as a reward for our searching, and at the very depth of this immersion, we find the lore of Signalis. The lore of Signalis is insane, both in depth, complexity, and in the levels of immersion it grants to the player. One can find notes that explain every enemy, room placement, and puzzle, not just from a practical standpoint and how to deal with it from a gameplay perspective, but also why in-universe it behaves the way it does. It will explain to you why enemies have certain attributes or why puzzles should be solved the way they are. Yet at the same time, this clarity is exhibited with uncertainty and mystery that connotates each step deeper into the vast sea of war that lies in wait. With world building that is mysterious and hard to comprehend, you will find yourself spending hours contemplating and considering what exactly you hold to be the truth behind the experience you just played. And talking to others, you will often find that their truth isn't the same as yours, yet both hold the same levels of validity based off the same experience offering a deep immersion and connection with the game that just has you begging for more. All in all, I believe that despite the limited resources of the two-person dev team that is Rose Engine, they managed to create something that should be called nothing other than a masterpiece. It is a masterpiece of brilliant game design that deeply connects you to the world that you roam around and offers an amazing experience to engage in, despite the limitations that the team must have faced in order to produce it. Hopefully some of you guys decide to check this game out. It is on Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and Switch. And also, apparently works on the Steam Deck, and is for free for anyone who owns Xbox Game Pass. If you do decide to install it, then be sure to join either the Signalis unofficial Discord, linked below for discussion on the vast world you just walked through, or VSL, my Discord, to join me in the search for the truth behind the mysteries that this game presents us. If you decide against installing it, that's fine as well. I hope you at very least, though, enjoyed this video. Until next time, though, this has been Christopher Beast. Ciao.